So hello everyone and welcome to today's developer meetup. Now my name is Max, I'm a senior manager here at Automation Anywhere and today I am joined by some real Automation Anywhere experts. We have Asif who is our Automation Anywhere MVP and Namal who is one of our lead technical writers. So Asif, Namal, thank you very much for joining today's developer meetup. Hello, hello everyone, thanks for joining. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Thank you, Max. Perfect. So today we are going to dive deep into something that is quite literally reshaping the way that automation happens at scale. And that is our control room APIs. Now, if you are here, it means that you are ready to level up your automation game with Automation Anywhere's control room APIs. Now, in today's meetup, we are going to take a look at what control room APIs are, including benefits and requirements. We are going to see an awesome demo from Asif, showcasing how you can get hands on with these API capabilities while highlighting best practice techniques to keep in mind. Then we are going to move to Namau, who will be showcasing the new documentation so that you can get hands on with the capabilities that we show today. We will then finish by showing you the new Automation Anywhere University courses that we have published, talk about upcoming events and hold a Q&A. So if you have any questions during this session for any of our speakers, please post them in the Q&A and we will pick these up at the end. Now with that, let's get started. So what are control room APIs? Well, they are like the command center of the automated world. Essentially REST-based APIs that open the door to the heart of the Automation Anywhere's control room. Now these APIs give us, as developers, direct programmatic access to everything that's going on under the hood. Think of it this way. Instead of manually pushing buttons, tweaking processes, and babysitting workflows, we are automating the automation itself. And that's exactly what the power of these APIs have when we leverage them. But let's break it down. First up, REST-based automation. Now, what does this mean? It means we are talking about the modern web standards here, HTTP methods and JSON responses, the language of the web. So if you are already familiar with building web applications or services, you're already halfway there. These APIs slot seamlessly into your existing tech stacks, allowing you to programmatically control, manage, and scale automations. There is also the simple integration factor. So whether you are working with cloud services, enterprise level applications, or your own homegrown solutions, these APIs speak the same language. So with just a few lines in your workflow or your API task, you can connect and start orchestrating some complex processes, like a maestro conducting an orchestra, but just in the world of automation. And of course, you have total control. So these APIs don't just let you automate a single process. They give you control over everything. You can trigger automations, monitor them in real time, scale them effortlessly, and adapt to changes dynamically. It's a bit like going from driving a car manually to having an autopilot that handles everything while you focus on innovation. And honestly, it's not just about automation, it's about scalability. With control room APIs, you are not just reducing manual effort, you are opening the door to a future where your automations manage themselves across your entire organization, growing with them your needs, adapting without constant intervention. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics of what control room APIs are, let's jump into the four key categories that will give you the real power to automate, scale, and manage your automations like a pro. So let's break them down one by one so you can see how each of these API categories can make your automation workflows smarter and more efficient. So first up, automation deployment and execution. So this is where you take control of how and when your automations run. With these APIs, you can deploy, update, 
and trigger your automations in real time, meaning you are always ready to respond to changes the moment they happen. So whether it's routine tasks or critical responses, the ability to control automation execution on demand gives you agility and precision that manual processes just can't match. Next is user management. Now, managing users, roles, and permissions doesn't have to be a manual, time-consuming process anymore. With these APIs, you can programmatically control user access, automate role assignments, and ensure the right people have the right permissions at the right time. So it's a way to streamline your team's interaction with automations and take the load off your admins, freeing them up for more important tasks. Then we have queue and workload management. When you are dealing with multiple automations across various systems, keeping everything running smoothly is key. So these APIs allow you to efficiently manage tasks and workloads, ensuring that automations can handle demand without hiccups. It's all about optimizing performance so you can maximize efficiency even in high demand environments. And finally, there's audit and login. Now these APIs give you the ability to capture detailed logs of your automation activity, including execution details, system health and errors. Now this isn't just about visibility, it's about having the data you need for compliance, troubleshooting and overall process monitoring. With real-time logging, you have clear window into what's happening with your automations at any given moment. Now, I'm only touching on a few benefits here, but when it comes to automating at scale, by incorporating control room APIs into your process, you are no longer dealing with the headache of manual deployment or tedious scheduling. Instead, these APIs give you the tools to automate everything on a larger scale effortlessly. So whether you are managing just a few automations or managing hundreds, it removes the manual bottlenecks and lets your operations flow seamlessly, even in high demand environments. But I can't lie, it gets even more exciting when integration becomes effortless. You can connect these APIs to almost anything. CICD pipelines, ERP systems, or whatever platforms you're using. The beauty of this is that you are not stuck trying to force your tools to fit around your automation setup. The APIs just slot right in, giving you end-to-end -end automation without the hassle of custom configurations. Now, when it comes to resilience with built-in error handling, your automations don't just stop when things go wrong. The APIs come with smart retry logic and failover mechanisms, meaning if an error pops up, your automations automatically attempt to recover. You don't need to sit around watching for errors and manually fixing things. The system takes care of itself, keeping everything moving smoothly. And always a big topic, security and compliance. Now, this is another area where these APIs shine. Governance is baked right in with these role-based access controls and detailed audit logs. Every action, every automation, every user, everything is fully trackable. So you always know what's going on. This makes it easy to stay compliant with industry standards and regulations without adding extra overhead. Right then, so before we move on to our demo, I just want to touch on the license and user requirements for using control room APIs. Because while the APIs are powerful, there are some key things to know before getting started. So first off, let's talk license requirements. To access these APIs, you'll need the Automation Anywhere license that specifically includes that API functionality. So if you are already working with Automation Anywhere, check that your current license covers the API features that you want to use. Next up are the user requirements. Now, not everyone can jump in and start using these APIs right out of the gate. Access is restricted to authorized custom roles configured by admins, mainly for bot developers, who are tasked to manage specific API automation processes. This isn't just about protecting the automations, it's about securing your entire automation environment. That's why API access can be managed with OAuth 2.0, providing an extra layer of security. Plus, depending on your setup, you can enhance security further with things like IP whitelisting, 
so only specific trusted networks can interact with the APIs. So now that we have that covered, let's jump into our demo. So joining me now, we have Asif, our Automation Anywhere MVP. Now, Asif is going to demonstrate how you can work with these control room APIs. So without further ado, Asif, the floor is yours. Sure, sure, Max. Thanks for allowing me in. And let me just share my screen. Perfect. Now, remember, everyone, any questions, please just put them in the Q&A and we'll pick them up afterwards. Uh, Asif, thank you very much. Sure. So the screen you guys can see here is a Postman application of a desktop version. On the left-hand side, you can see the collections I have imported. And we'll see how we can import the collection. We have to click on import. And we can drag and drop the file here. Uh, that is basically just a JSON file. Let me explain that as well. So this is how the actual JSON file looks like. So maybe we can help you guys with the with this uh, file and you can see how the collection file looks like. Basically, it stores all the information related to the APIs and uh, a header, body and everything so that we will look what exactly the URI header and uh, variables, other variables means. So on the left-hand side, once I import the collection file, we'll be able to see this kind of a hierarchy. So basically this, these are the all the features of the control room and uh, with their respective APIs, which is listed here. Similarly, on the left-hand side, you will be able to see the environment variables. Uh, this is the environment variable, which I will be going to use. Why we are using this? Basically, we are saving here the uh, credentials here and the control room URL, URL. And apart from that, we can save here the API key and the token. So let me just open that environment variable. So here you can see I have saved here a variable. Uh, a URL A360 that consists of uh, my control room URL, uh, which I want to point, and then my username, my password, and then the API key. And uh, the another variable is the token. So I will explain you how the token can be uh, can be generated. So let's dive into the first API, which is our authentication API, so that we can get entered, we can get authenticated and uh, we can get the token. So basically this is the URI and this is the method which I'm using here as a post and I'm passing here my URL and uh, in the body, I will be passing my username and API key. So there are multiple ways to get authenticated. So we can use username, password, API key and other, there are several other methods as well. So right now I will be using as API key. And in the header, you can see these are some information uh, which will automatically get generated once you uh, import the collection. And on the, on the third tab here in the script, you can see there are two lines of code. Basically what it does is once we hit the send, then the, the token which is getting generated in our body that will be getting stored in, in, in our in, uh, environment variable token. So let me just click and get authenticated. So here you can see I have I have received a token and all the information once I got authenticated. So this token will be saved inside my environment variable here. Let me showcase it to you guys. So here, the reason we are storing this token here is uh, as we will be using multiple APIs here. So every time we don't have to authenticate ourselves or come here to copy this token. And so that, that's the reason we are getting it saved in the environment variable. And, and the same can be used across all the APIs which we will be using. Okay, so uh, this is what uh, we are doing here to authenticate. And the next uh, API we'll be using is 
uh, validate token. So this will validate uh, whether the token is correct or not. Uh, let's say in, a, in, in some of the use cases where we are logging into the control room and after some time we are uh, we are trying to refresh the page or something, it takes you out. So that's the reason even in the automation, wherever we are using uh, uh, these APIs, we have to make sure that uh, once we have authenticated, so the token which has been generated is well, is properly valid or not. So for that purpose, we can use here a validate token. So here you can see in the URI, in the URI that uh, I have passed this variable as a token, which is referring to my environment variable. And in the body as well, I'm passing my token here. So once I click here, I will be getting a response whether it is proper or not. So right now in our case, it is true. So that's the reason it has validated and given as a flag as true. So uh, by this way, uh, we understand that uh, the token is true and properly valid. Uh, for the next API to be called. And just in case, if you guys face any issues uh, while understanding these APIs where uh, you are authenticating yourself and uh, you, you might see some of the error codes happening here. So in, the, in that case, what you can do is you can quickly open your uh, control room, control room swagger, and uh, you can check whether the method which you are using or uh, the URI which you are using or the header and the body is correct or not. So how we can open the swagger. So that will be our control room URL. Once I enter the control room URL, I can enter swagger slash. That will allow you to go to all the APIs and the features which are available in the control room. So here we can see version one, version two, version three, and version four respectively. And uh, inside each of the APIs, uh, we can see the listed the, the listed URI and the endpoints. Uh, here we can see this is for authentication. So I will also help you guys to understand how we can use uh, Swagger. Okay, let's get started here as well. So just to try it out, uh, if you don't have Postman in that scenario, how you will how you will uh, going to understand what exactly the API is and how it is working. So this is how we can uh, use Swagger if we don't have Postman. So once you come here, click on Try It Out, and here you can pass the username. So in my case, I will be passing this as a Hasif dot Shake at Solutions dot com so i don't want to use here a password so i will be using here my api key so where i will get that api key which i have stored here in the postman i will also explain how we can get the api key for the new users so this is my api key and uh, i'm pasting here my api key Okay, and then click on execute. Okay, bad request. So similarly, you guys can see here, the token is generated the same way what we have done in the postman. The only thing which you have to make sure that uh, if you are opening any of the other APIs in the Swagger, like let's say I want to go to credential list, or what we can do is we can open this in new tab. Credential list. click on try it out and then what we can do is just copy this token from here and make sure that you choose scheme as a HTTPS as what our control room is referring to and then click on authorize 
and paste your token here and get yourself authenticated. So now in with this step, your authentication is done. You got the token and you are using that token to call any of the other APIs here. So, so this is how it works in Swagger. You just have to manually copy and paste your token and uh, uh, continue the work. So let's get continue with the postman. So the next API, let me first get authenticate myself as I have used Swagger there. So now I have the fresh token here. And then moving to the next API, uh, what we can look is the credential vault. So first, what we will do is to get the list of API, list of credentials, which is present inside the control room. So here, using this endpoint and uh, in the header, if you can see, I have passed token. And here in the body, I am passing the filter uh, because I'm not as such specific filter because I want to retrieve all the credentials that are available in the control room. So here are the list of uh, list of uh, the credentials which are available. And also I can showcase it to you here. So all these credentials which are listed here, you can see the see the count as 13. And uh, here we can see all the total filter as 30 with respective of each and every credential present here. Like sales order, if you want to see sales order login here that exists in the control room. Yes, sales order login. And inside that credential, if you want to see the attributes there, email, password, whatever it is, so here you can see as an email and here you can see as a password. So all the information related to the when that attribute get created, when that uh, credential got created, all this information, you can see it here. So the reason of showing this uh, API like credential, uh, the reason is, I mean, there are a couple of use cases where uh, uh, you will be working on the, the processes which has more than 40 or 30 credentials. So at that point of time, if you are doing the development for the first time, you can create the credential manually. But then when you move your code to uh, UAT or production, at that point of time, what do you will do? Uh, will you going to create that all, all that attributes manually in, in all of the other environment? So that's where uh, man, uh, while doing that manual stuff, many times it happens you uh, you you get confused or while doing the copy paste uh, something goes wrong and during the develop uh, during the testing or in the production phase when your bot run your bot comes with the multiple errors so what you can do is you can try you can have this apis and uh, you can get all the information from that api from the development control room and similarly you can create uh, you can create an automation wherein you can read all the credentials from uh, dev control room and you can create the credential in your UAT and production control room. So in that way, you will save a lot of time. So the next API, what we'll look into is create credential. So here we have an, another API where I will be creating a credential. So let's say I'm creating this credential with demo. purpose. Okay. And once I click on send, so you can see with a fraction of second, this, this is my uh, credential and this are the attributes, attribute, test attribute one, test attribute two. Okay. So it got created within fraction of second. So if I go back, and see here, this is the one which got generated. With this name and this, this is my test attribute. 
So this is how it makes the life easy when we use the APIs, especially for the control room. So this will be helping a team where we have a, a support team who will who, will, who are uh, I mean uh, doing this stuff manually again and again. I was being part of uh, one of the team earlier, so that's where I created this stuff so that this can be helpful for other people as well in the community. So let's look into another API, repository management. So using this API, what we will do is we'll try to get all the, all the files and uh, all the folders present inside the control room. So this is the filter, basically I'm using it. Depending upon your uh, your request, like if you want to have a particular field, particular file, then you can just put that field name here and enter the value. Uh, if you have any specific file to be, uh, uh, you, 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 are, you, are, you are wanting to download it. So once I click on send here, so you can see the list of all the files in, in my control room is present here and all the folders. So what we can do is uh, we can take any of the ID, let's say this ID, and if I want to export this file, if I want to export this file, so how we can do that, we'll be using another API that is from BLM. And here I will be passing that ID, which I got from this API. And uh, I will mention here as uh, Testing export. Pardon. So this API will help us to export the file without interacting with the UI. So once we click on send, and also I would like to add here the point like uh, while while uh, exporting any of the file we used to select an option called as in, in, uh, include the package or not. Let me, so let me explain you guys here. So if I have a sample what and uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I want to export that. So let's say I want to export this file. So here we have an option to exclude the bot package. So same way we if we are setting the flag here. If you if you want to include the package or if you want to, if you already have imported this file multiple times, then you can just put the flag as a false so that the file size can be less. So after once I click on send, I got this request ID. So uh, what we can do is we can check the status, whether this file is available to download or not, because uh, many times it happens if your file is too heavy in size, then it takes a uh, time for control room to uh, to get it uh, available for you to get downloaded so once you click on send so you can see the status as completed and similarly whatever we are doing here the same activity you can see here in the control room
So this is where you can see the status has completed and uh, the package is available to download. Once you click on export zip, then it will be getting downloaded. This is what we can do using UI. Uh, by using APIs, how we can do is we have to just pass the same request ID here and click on send. So many times it takes uh, uh, time to get generated. Uh, so what we can do, we can move it to other, other uh, APIs. Meanwhile, this will be getting generated. So this is the repository management. So let's go with WLM. So on the UI, you can see here, this is the test queue, which is available in the control room. And these are the details of that particular queue. And this is the work item structure here. So in order to get this information using the API, we will going to pass this filter and just hit the request. So this will allow me to get all the information related to the queue, the same which we can see in the control room UI. And the same way we have multiple APIs to, you know, if you want to delete the queue, then what we can do is uh, uh, we can get the ID of that particular queue. And uh, if you want to delete any queue, we just have to pass that queue detail here and just click on send. Then this AP, this uh, queue will get, de will get deleted. So what do you have to make sure that if you are using the correct, uh, as what I have mentioned earlier, if you are using the correct method method or not, uh, you can always refer this swagger, which will help you to understand uh, the proper uh, endpoint URI, the body and everything. And still, if you are not able to understand anything, you can reach out to the document, uh, document docs portal where you can get the details. So here you can see, this is the method. This is the URI. And the complete URI you will be able to see here, V3 WLM, V3 WLM. And this is the body. This is how you will be getting the response code. Uh, if you are doing some something wrong, then it, it will say it as a bad request and uh, anything wrong you are doing it you are you can refer it here so that you will be able to understand what you are doing wrong and for header you can see this application type as application json and the last part what we can see here is uh, we have uh, global values so now we have APIs available to create this global value and to update the value of this global value. So let's, let's check how it works with the postman. So this is the API to create the global value. Uh, where you can see if I manually go and click here, this is what I have to enter name, description, type as a string and value. Uh, and 
the scope of that global value, whether it can be changed or not. Uh, the same way while creating it, we can see this is the name, description, type, whether uh, it can be override or not. And is this a public and what is the value of that particular global variable? So, so by passing all this information, we'll be able to create the global values using the APIs. So right now, I have already this one test name. Let me delete this. And let me try to recreate this. So this is how I got the response as 200 OK. And here, once I refresh my page, you'll be able to see the test name. And inside that, you'll be able to see the type as string name and the value. And this cannot be changed. So the same way you have multiple APIs available here. You can use any of the APIs. Uh, you can import this collection and get used to it. And the same way you can also import and export your environment variable in case if you're moving or shifting from one desktop, one PC to another. So this will help you guys to understand the complete understanding of control room APIs. And apart from that, we have a very cool feature uh, called as connector builder that allows you to do the things more much more easy manner so where you can find that that feature uh, inside packages you can see the tab here as a connector once you go in the connector you will be able to see what all uh, connectors you have created. If not, uh, if you want to create any such, uh, just click on create, enter the name, and enter the base URL. So in my case, this is the base URL for my control room. So same way, if you have any, any of the uh, endpoint or any of the APIs you are referring or you want to create uh, uh, a package of that, then you can follow the same steps and uh, do the same way. And here we have two ways, two, three ways to uh, import the file, the, the JSON file, right? Right now we have, as what I have shown in the Postman, we have Postman collection here. You can just go through it and uh, import the same collection file and just click on import. Uh, so you will be able to see all these in all the APIs got imported here and listed here and where you don't have to do anything manually. And same way you can publish this connector and get it uh, inside your task box. Uh, once you click here on publish, uh, you will be able to see same thing in your task bots available inside your control room. So so this is what you can see and drag and drop your uh, your required APIs which you want to work on. And uh, to get more insights inside on this connector builder, we have a separate uh, uh, explanation video where uh, Vineet and his team has explained uh, the proper use of connector builder. So we can share it once uh, after this meetup. And the very last thing I would like to explain here is uh, how we can use the REST web service command to, to automate these APIs. So I have created a, a bunch of API, uh, APIs task here. So you can see So far, we, we saw that how we are uh, 
authenticating using Postman and Swagger. So if you want to implement the same in your task boards, how you, you want to do is, this is how I have uh, used REST web service command action. And here I have passed my uh, URL and uh, same way I have enabled here the headers. Uh, right now you can see header as application JSON and content type is also application JSON here. And then I have passed the parameters here, uh, username, password, API key, and uh, the same way I have imported my credentials here that will be mapping to my username, which I have passed here in the parameter. Let me, yeah, maximize this. So if you can see here, this is what I have mapped as my username and password and API key. And here I, I'm getting a response, saving it, saving it into my response variable. So if it says that it is okay, then uh, if it does not include 200 okay, then it will throw an error. And the whatever response I'm getting it, I'm saving, I'm getting it through the response body and uh, reading the token here. So basically this task is responsible for uh, getting the token. So once I save this token here, I'm ending that uh, JSON session. And then uh, the very next step, what I'm doing is I'm validating the token, if it is uh, valid or not. So you can see uh, in this task, I'm uh, getting the token from one, one API, authentication API and I'm passing a token to the very next API that is validate token. That's what we saw in the postman. So what will what this API will do? Let me open that task as well. Same way what we saw in the postman, we are passing the URL and just a token here. And in response, we'll be getting whether it is uh, valid or not. And this, vari this variable I'm passing it through here as a token flag. So if this is a valid, then it will say, yes, it's valid. So let me try to run this. Oops. Yeah, so bot is running now. So this is, you can see guys, here I have a token, it got, which got generated. And once I click it, it will validate whether this token is correct or valid or not. So 
this is how it says token is valid. So that's it from my end. Uh, over to you, Max. Amazing. Thank you very much for that uh, for that demo there, Asif. Really, really appreciate it. Perfect. So, Asif, just going over then at what was uh, demonstrated um, in your demo just there, are you able to just quickly touch on creating a, a little recap on what just went over for the part uh, the participants that joined a little bit late and also just to uh, summarize these uh, best practice actions when it comes to using the control room apis yeah sure so uh, these are some best practices which we have to uh, keep in mind while doing the development uh, or while uh, automating the apis so we have to make sure that uh, uh, we are keeping the urls and you uh, control room url at a proper place and uh, uh, similarly username and password and api key related stuff should be kept inside a credential vault and if you are uh, working on postman then you can save it inside the environment variable and uh, whatever you are doing when it comes to roles and permission we have to verify uh, like if if i'm doing something like uh, creating global values using apis and if I'm not able to do it, so we have to check whether I have a permission for that specific uh, feature or API. So, so that's where uh, roles and permission come into the picture. And uh, uh, if you are facing issues like uh, uh, any of the API is not working correctly, you are getting the bad responses. At that time, what you can do is simply open Swagger and just validate whether you are passing the correct URI or not, uh, whether you are uh, entering the proper method, HTTP method or not. So that will make your life easy to understand uh, what thing is going wrong there. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you very much, Asif. And once again, thank you for your demonstration there and uh, your time taking everybody through it. Sure. Thanks, man. Okay. Now, I've been watching the chat and I've been looking at the Q&A and a lot of questions have come in around, well, how do we uh, how do we find these APIs? Where is the details on how in order to be able to set these up? And that is what we have coming up here. So lucky for all of you, we have just revamped our documentation. And I have no other than Nirmal, our lead technical writer, to guide you through where to access and how to properly make the most of the latest and greatest documentation. So, Nirmal, thank you for joining today's developer meetup. Over to you, my friend, to show everyone how to make the most of these control room APIs. Thank you, Max. Let me share my screen. Mm. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes, I see it perfect. Awesome. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nirmal Matimaran. I am a lead technical writer, and I specialize in API and SDK writing. Today, I'm uh, super excited to uh, bring you to the API Docs portal. Uh, which is within the do docs.automationanywhere.com. So in my presentation, I'll take you through how you can navigate to the documentation portal. I'll then show you some of the key features, and I also will demo you parallelly on how you can take advantage of some of the API samples within the docs portal. And... Uh, Finally, I will also show you some, uh, you know, some features within the Docs portal itself, and we encourage uh, each of our users to the Docs portal to log into the documentation portal, so that you can take advantage of certain features that comes to you when you actually log into the documentation portal. So I'll be taking you through those features as well at the end of the documentation uh, API Docs presentation. So let's start with uh, the API docs, how you can access it. 
So you can either access the, you can go to the docs.automation.anywhere.com, sorry, docs.automationanywhere.com and search for uh, control room APIs in the search field, or you can also, uh, you know, click on this link, which is available under the feature content. So this content, these are all our featured content, and this is a constant link which stays in our homepage. You can click on this link, which will directly take you to the uh, control room APIs. Uh, so it's coming to the features, as uh, Asif was showing many APIs. Actually, we have close to 150 public APIs. And we, we have tested all these APIs and documented this in our documentation portal. And each of the samples, what you see in the documentation portal, and also in Swagger, are real samples. And you know, you can which have the pre-filled body. You can directly copy this one and you know test it in using uh, uh, any any API client like Postman. So uh, let me show you parallelly. Like this is our docs.automationanywhere.com. I hope you can see the screen, right? This, Max, can you confirm? Yes, I can see the documentation screen. Okay, awesome. So you can uh, go to docs.automation.anywhere.com and you know search for control room APIs and click this link, or you can also click from this, uh, as I said, from the home page. And the other way is you can also go to automationanywhere.com itself and uh, directly you can search for control room APIs from this one. And you can click on this link, which will directly take you to the central uh, documentation, like the API docs uh, page, which actually lists all the modules. So as I said, we are hosting close to 150 uh, plus API document uh, documentation. So all each of these are the modules, and within these modules, there are several APIs embedded in it. So um, coming back, yeah. So. We have a user very user friendly three pane layout where we, uh, you know, we use a uh, plugin called as Redoc, which uses uh, Open AI under the hood. So it's a standard uh, environment where uh, we have this wonderful three pane layout. Where on the left hand side you will see all the APIs listed, and you can easily navigate from one API to another. And in the central pane, you'll see the, uh, you know, the description of the API plus the description of the parameters clearly listed here. And on the right hand side, you will see the API endpoint and the request sample and also a response sample. Let me jump into quickly to show you how it looks. So as I said, this is a central page which you can go from this link here, it will land you in this page. And from here, you can actually, you know, click on any of the links. So I, I clicked on repository management here and let me close this link. And you see, you see it's actually rendering the, uh, you know, the API docs as you go here and you see in the three pane layout where you see on the left hand side the the you know where you can navigate to different apis here and on the central pane you see the description with the different parameters and here you can actually see the whole you know the request and the response sample here is a response sample and here is a rec uh, you know request sample so here you can actually expand all to see the whole sample collapse it, you know, if you want to save some space. Uh, and you can actually copy these samples. As I mentioned, all these samples are really, uh, you know, real samples which are tested in-house before they are they were documented. So let me uh, 
quickly copy this and, and you know test it for you guys. So this one uh, is a Postman as ASIF for showing. So let me authenticate first. And ASIF actually touched on this repository uh, file list API. So let me now paste this here. This is a body which I just copied from the documentation portal and I'm sending it here. And you see there are SAMP, uh, you know, the, there is an output and there are like uh, totally the four filtered files. So you see like how the samples are working here, like how you can, you know, make use of the documentation portal along with the postman. So uh, as I'm here, I'm also going to touch base on another feature. As I said, the parameters are all listed here. If you go to the authentication, for example, API, you see these parameters as uh, Asif was saying, like, you know, the this requires these things. Either you have to pass on username, password, or you have to pass on username with an API key. So these parameters are clearly marked as required. Whereas here, if you see these parameters are not marked as required. So this will be very useful for you when you actually develop your queries. So for example, since in this, there is nothing marked as required, let us actually you know, remove the whole body and pass a empty body and see what happens. As you see, the, there are now 84 files uh, listed now because we didn't filter anything. So that's how you, know, you can make use of this uh, you know, fields to see which is required, which are not required. And let me uh, also show you another popular API, which is a bot deploy API. Um, you know, when you click on this link, this opens this one here. This is one of our famous API, like any automation you're going to deploy, you need this bot deploy API. And uh, you see uh, the advantage in this uh, particular thing is we have different flavors where the bot deploy API gets uh, you know, executed, where it can be in attended mode or unattended mode or a headless mode. So here, uh, here in this sample, as I'm say, showing you, you see the attended request here you can actually jump to unattended or headless. You see the sample dynamically changes. So you can take any of this, copy it. And as I, you know, demoed you, you can actually paste it in the postman and, you know, run it um, just to see the output. Uh, so going back to my presentation. So as I said, uh, we have all the, all the 150 plus samples pre-filled tested code samples, you can simply copy and paste and you know start your automation. That is, uh, we, have, we have made sure that all those samples are, are real samples. So going further. And here I'm, uh, in this slide, I'm saying how we have synced up the Swagger on the docs portal. So, uh, for us, a Swagger is our single source of truth. We uh, we have how we do our uh, documentation is we make sure that the we make the you know sample ready uh, you know put it in Swagger, and once it is all running good, then we actually sync this particular file with the Docs portal. So you can either use the Docs portal or Swagger to get a real sample, which you can use it in your uh, you know in your sample for your automation. Uh, with that, I'm coming to an end of my, uh, you know, before I finish, let me highlight some of the docs portal feature itself. Uh, that's it with the API docs. So let me switch gears and show you some of the you know, docs portal features. This particular icons you will see at any, you know, any pages in the docs portal, for example, here you see, but these two these two links you will see only when you actually log into the documentation portal and there are a lot of advantages to this uh, two icons let me uh, show you in this so this is this icon what i'm highlighting here this is a uh, you know a favorite icon um, where you can actually bookmark something uh, if you are in this topic and if you feel like you want to come back later at a time and you know read over it or if you like this topic and you want to you know read it again and again you you can actually bookmark this all the bookmark topics go into this link here 
where you can actually go in a previous, uh, in a later time to watch all the topics. You can, uh, the other thing what I want to highlight here is the watch feature. Say for example, uh, you like this topic and you want to watch this topic. Uh, what happens is if there is any update to this topic, if there are any new APIs added to this topic, or say, for example, this deprecation, for example, we are going to have a new deprecations for dot 34 release, which is going to happen this evening. So in that case, it's like whenever we have updates to this page and when you're watching this page, you will get a notification when you are logged in. So your email will get a, you know, a notification saying that this page has an update. So that will be really useful for you. So the other, other feature I want to call out here is a feedback feature. So let me click on this feedback. And here you can actually say, for example, you are in certain uh, part of the documentation and you are liking a page, you can click on the like button and you can put all your inputs here and you know send us a feedback. Like when I start typing here, you see this, this link gets activated and you know the email id is auto or it's auto populated and you can send feedback even like if you if you for example if you're in a page and if you want a, a sample to be improved or a you know a topic to be improved or if you're not seeing a sample what you like to see you know you can put all your feedback here and send us we actually work on this feedbacks on very high priority uh, we make sure that you know we actually close these tickets ASAP. So, you know, you, you're more than welcome to put your feedback here and send us the feedback. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone for listening and I back to Max. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that, Nimal. Awesome. Okay, so we have just gone over then how that we can start using our control room APIs and where to access all of the documentation. Now, as Numel has just gone over with you all, as you can see, that documentation contains everything that you need in order to be able to get your APIs set up and jump in and start utilizing them. Okay, now moving on to the new Automation Anywhere University courses. That, if you haven't already seen, should be your next stop. So first up, we have more content in our Point 33 Delta training. One of the, well, one of the videos that is now live for you to be able to review is our Getting Started with our AI Agent Studio. Now, this feature is a game changer for building intelligent agents. With AI Agent Studio, you can design AI powered automations that automate complex workflows by integrating cognitive capabilities. In this, you'll learn how to create agents that can make decisions, interpret unstructured data and perform tasks that previously required manual intervention. We also have videos exploring the connector builder enhancements, and I know there were a few questions around the connector builder as well. So this video would answer them for you. Now the connector builder has been upgraded, making it easier to create custom integrations between automation anywhere and other enterprise applications. In this video, we will walk you through the new features that simplify the process, helping you build connectors faster and with more flexibility. Now, another video is that we explore automation template enhancements. Now, automation templates have also received significant improvements. Here, you'll discover how the new enhancements allow you to create reusable templates that streamline your automation projects, reducing development time and ensuring best practices are consistently applied across teams. We also have more videos coming to the prompt engineering for automation developers. Now, this session is perfect for developers looking to work with generative AI models. Prompt engineering helps you optimize the way that you communicate with large language models to get more accurate and useful results. You'll gain insights on how you can craft better response, better prompts 
and ensuring your automations leverage AI more effectively. With this, it's not just about getting the correct response one time, it's about getting the correct response every time. Now, when you go over the understanding parameters for working with large language models, this really covers the fact that they do require that precision and understanding the right parameters is key. Now, in this segment, we dive into the essential parameters that you need to configure when integrating large language models into your automations. And this will allow you to fine tune the responses and improve overall performance. Now, we also have updates to the certification. We are actually thrilled to announce new certification opportunities with both essentials and advanced automation certification tracks being updated. Now, this is a fantastic chance for you to validate your skills and gain recognition as a certified Automation Anywhere expert. So whether you are looking to cover the basics or dive into the advanced automation techniques, these certifications will help you stand out in the automation landscape. Now, these videos will give you everything you need to stay on top of Automation Anywhere's latest releases and empower you with the latest tools, skills and certifications to succeed. Each new feature or enhancement has been designed to help you streamline your automation processes, integrate more easily with AI and develop more efficient workflows. So be sure to check these out to stay ahead of the curve and take advantage of these exciting updates. Now then, what we have coming up. So first up, join us for the next product club as we explore AI solution accelerators. And this is happening on October the 9th. So this is a great opportunity here directly from Luis Bocinez, our Senior Director of Sales Engineering and discover the latest AI features in the Automation Anywhere platform. Now, in this session, you'll be receiving an exclusive overview of the newest AI tools to enhance your automation efforts, a chance to engage in a live Q&A with product leaders and gaining real-time insights and an opportunity to share your feedback and help shape the future of product innovations. Next up, we have Automation Anywhere's Document Automation Training Camp, which starts October the 14th. Now, there were a few questions around document automation, so I definitely recommend signing up to this. Now, this is an immersive program, and it's designed to equip you and train your team with the latest skills in AI-powered intelligent document processing. Now, in under two hours a week, you're going to learn how to accurately classify documents, build and fine tune your generative AI learning instances and develop strategies for large scale document processing. You'll also connect with industry experts and automation professionals from around the globe, gaining actionable insights to reduce manual work, improve accuracy and accelerate business processes. So I'd certainly try not to miss out on any of these. Registrations are open for the free weekly courses live coaching and expert tips to revolutionize your document workflows and take a look at the AI solution accelerators. These are all available on our events page and I'll include a link in the email that will be sent out after this session. Now moving on to our Q&A. So just before we jump into the Q&A, I do want to thank everybody for participating in today's session. So if you have any questions for myself or the team, this is your chance to be able to put them straight into our Q&A part. So I'm just going to take a look at the questions here. So Asif, uh, we have a question here for you. So is API the only way to get a work item ID? Oh, let's see if you are uh, on mute currently. Yeah, I mean, uh, we can get the work item ID using APIs. Perfect. Yes. Amazing. And um, Namal, uh, all these API tasks, uh, can these be performed using Swagger without using Postman? Yes. 
Awesome. Now, uh, do you know, is it possible to also export a task bot file from a private repository? No, I mean, uh, if you have to export any of the file, you have to uh, check in the file and make sure that it is available inside uh, a public repository. And then from there, you can export the file. Perfect. Now, when it comes to signing up to the document automation training camp, this is all available in our automation anywhere events page. And again, I will make sure a link for that is sent out to everybody that's joined this session once this session ends. Now, with regards to the remaining questions that, that are coming through here. So we have one here. So through connectors, if we can create a package, is there a way to load from Swagger and from where that Postman JSON file has been downloaded? So that JSON file, we will be sharing it to you guys uh, one after the meetup so that you guys can also do hands-on importing it on Postman. And yeah, then... I will. I will also add this add, add this collection to the documentation portal, and uh, you know people can go there to download the file. Awesome. Now, uh, can somebody also just clear up the differences then in API implementations for on-premise customers and cloud users? So, for on-prem, uh, if you will be if you want to uh, make API automation, you have to do a couple of whitelisting. Uh, and for cloud, you don't have to do anything. Uh, but for yes, for on-prem version, you have to whatever APIs you are uh, re uh, calling or requesting that needs to be whitelisted from your uh, network team. And and Nirmal, if you if you can add something on this. Um... Sorry, uh, the whitelisting. There is a page which actually lists all the you know whitelisting uh, for the API uh, for the API task or what what exactly you mean, Sif? Yeah, I mean uh, uh, if uh, any, I mean this basically a user want to know uh, if uh, what is the difference if we have uh, uh, API on prem and uh, uh, cloud version. What will be the difference if you want to? Right. Yeah, we so have I mean, we have pages in the documentation portal which explains clearly what what is the difference. Yeah, so basically, as per my knowledge, you can uh, uh, get the, that API whitelisted, and then you can use it. Awesome. Now we also have here about tracking the specific word item ID and performing actions just based on that status. And yes, if you're able to pull that work item ID, utilizing the API task or the automation task, you'll be able to work and perform an action based on the status that is returned. Uh, this is similar to the example that Asif gave when he returned that value coming back where the uh, the trope token is true. So it'll be a similar circumstance to this. Okay, going through then. Oh, is there a possibility to check by API which package versions are available and used by which task? So we can update the package versions, uh, but uh, we can we can have this uh, uh, question solved uh, after this meeting. Perfect. Sounds good. So going through the questions now, this seems to be all of the questions that we've got in answered. Uh, as a follow-up to this, what we're going to do is make sure that the answers for these questions that have been typed up will also be received uh, to you. But if there are no other questions that are coming in, this does bring us to the end of this developer meetup session. So once again, I thank you very much for joining. If there are any questions that come afterwards, please feel free to send me over an email or drop a message in our Automation Anywhere Pathfinder community page where either of us will be able to jump in and ask, answer your questions. Now, thank you very much, everybody, for joining today's session. Thank you. Thank you, and everyone. Of course, go be great.